show today. Uh, if you're looking at us live or uh, the, the podcast version or video cast version of this show on YouTube or over live on Spreaker, you can download the Spreaker app for free, listen to all the episodes of this show, uh, as well as SoundCloud, or if you're one of the many people that listen to this show uh, every day uh, on Blog Talk Radio, um, we do all of our shows live from um, YouTube, Spreaker, and Blog Talk. Uh, Tuesday, we have a good lineup. Uh, Kevin Kress is my co-host on Tuesdays. Uh, last week we had, uh, Lee Steinberg, mega agent. So, uh, go definitely go over to the CHT on sports.com, which you can see right here. Um, if you're looking at YouTube, that's also down below in the comment section. If you want to read, watch, listen, any of the previous shows or content that's over there, great articles over on the website as well. Uh, if you're clicking on the listen link in the upper left-hand corner, you can listen to all these shows. All the shows of uh, To The Half uh, with myself, Matthew Long, and The Cold Heart Truth on Sports, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, CMT Firestorm, we are, uh, which is going to go through some a little bit of a makeover here pretty soon, or Sunday um, with The Boxing Source, hosted by James Bell. So just a little intro here. Uh, I want to get into the meat of the topics today. The two topics we're going to hit on today is the 49ers over the weekend hired a general manager. It was not the general manager as a lot of people thought. Uh, they decided to go outside the box with this uh, hire and hire John Lynch, um, the Hall of Fame safety finalist uh, for this year's uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. So I'll get into that. And then the Knicks. Uh, it's come down. Uh, sources have, have uh, revealed to me that Phil Jackson has officially or has notified front office staff and staff that he wants to put Carmelo Anthony on the trade block. Um, as we know, there's been rumors going around of a trade, and which I talked about uh, last week uh, on this show, um, Carmelo to the Ma or to the Cavaliers, which didn't work out um, and then some rumors about him potentially going to the Clippers um, so we'll get into that in the show today as well all right first nature of business when when you're hiring people and again I've been in the capacity obviously not to hire somebody at, at this pay grade uh, but hiring managers people that run a company uh, being in that position before, uh, there's a lot of different things that you look for in a potential candidate. Um, depending on the industry, depending on uh, what you're looking for is in culture, what you're looking for in overall in fulfilling uh, your business and the position that you are trying to fill. Um, the crazy thing is, a lot of companies have this mold or have this idea of what this person is supposed to be, you know, you know, you look at the degree, uh, what, what degree do they have? Um, you look at uh, the person's experience. Well, how often have they done this? Who have they worked for before? What has their success for been uh, doing this job or a similar job in the past? Those are kind of, kind of uh, general rules of engagement when you look at any sort of a position, um, you know. But I learned along the way when you're evaluating talent and people, um, although somebody may not have the experience doing that job specifically or something where it's really what you deem to be, you know, air quotes, related, uh, Sometimes the best person for the job may be somebody that doesn't fit the mold at all. Uh, there's been many times, uh, like for example, um, hiring somebody that uh, does pest control. Uh, we'll use pest control. Something uh, straight up position that uh, no high school or high school diploma, no experience really needed, but who you want to look for. 
you know, usually you go, oh, you look for your competitors. Who, who, who did my competitors hire? Let's see if I can hire them away or hire the guys that didn't really work out. You know, make, make some phone calls within the industry. You know, there's a lot of guys. You, you'd be surprised um, who might refer you to someone. Hey, this guy, uh, sorry, he just couldn't pass the background for our MVR. Uh, for the motor vehicle report side for our insurance because we're at a higher risk. We're a smaller company, but you're a bigger company. You know, he's a good employee. I'd like to see him, you know, in the industry having work. So here, call, call, call John. Uh, John would be a good fit. He just couldn't work with our company because of our ridiculous standards for insurance. Simple. Um, but, some, you know, something like that. But a lot of times... Companies don't start to think, or they'll just say, look at, you know, who's had work experience before. Oh, they've worked at a job, da, da, da. What do they do? Well, with the work experience thing, a lot of people will look in the industry. Well, what have you done in the industry? Oh, you were a salesperson in the industry, so let's make you a technician. You're somebody that sat in a cubicle, you know, taking orders all day who wants to set up service so you're probably the natural person that wants to be out in florida and uh you know in high humidity heat uh in the summer months spraying the lawns with chemicals and pushing around a spreader that's yeah that's uh that sounds like a great fit sometimes those guys are and sometimes those guys are the best salespeople as technicians so they'll get a lot of commissions and and increase the size of the routes and uh, the campaigns and stuff that uh, the companies are going on. So that, that could be a definite plus. But a lot of times what they don't look at is, okay, what do they do all day? They're driving. They're standing for long hours. Doing repetitive work. Engaging with customers. Okay, so those are some base. Those are four basic traits of what this person does on a daily basis. You know. Well, who else does that? Painters, tilers, handymen, roofers, other people along those lines. So now instead of looking for the perfect fit for the mold, you're looking for traits that describe what you need. You're looking for those basic essentials, those basic skills. And too often, and I'm let's look right here at the camera. Too often, people set this standard or this mold of what something has to look like. And unfortunately, the best person for your job doesn't look anything like you're picturing. You know, I have several friends that are artists. So you'll ask them to do something and, and maybe you had this idea, but what came out is so much better than anything you could picture. So how can, why, why put why harness a potential for your candidates? Why, why, why cut them off the knees before they've even walked in the door? Um, and, and and look and, and and look for those basic things. What what do you need them? What, what are they used to doing? You know stuff like that. So now you know those basic skills. You're not going to have to worry about them quitting quick because they can't stand driving, standing for long hours, doing repetitive work, or dealing with customers. Now you know those things are stuff that they've done. So when we look at, and I've seen a ton of criticism, I, again, I have more research and stuff I'm doing for my article on it, but so many people were being so critical of this, the San Francisco 49ers hiring John Lynch, a guy with no front office experience. He's never ran a franchise, um, never done any of the particular work that mold that uh, that they're looking for um, a general manager to fit into. Um, but I can tell you what, uh, he had a 15-year NFL career. Before that, three years at Stanford. Uh, he was a dual athlete at Stanford. He went to their, he was on the team, it was in 1990, 1991, when they went to uh, the College World Series. He's high IQ guy, um, you know, again, former quarterback. Yes, he transferred. He, he converted over to a safety once he went to Stanford. Um, you know, again, Stanford alum. You, to be there and to qualify academically is not a is not something you want to diminish from somebody. You know, um, 
So it's good, good lineage there. Um, he's been around the league. You know, he's worked with good general managers. He's worked with a lot of good coaches. Um, up until recently, he's been an analyst, an analyst uh, for uh, the NFL on Fox. Now, is this normally the person that, you know, that teams are going to haul in or are going to look for or really dial up in in, uh, in response to hiring? No, no. Um, uh, no, they're going to look at, you know, like the Panthers assistant general manager, Brian Bean, who again interviewed for the job. Uh, and again, that was reported by NFL on Fox. Uh, they would look at guys like, um, you know, um, assistant GM George Patton from the from the Minnesota Vikings, also interviewed for the job. Um, the VP of football operations, Jimmy Ray, the third, um, again, who interviewing for the job. Um, and his son is a former offensive coordinator for the 49ers as well. Adam Scheffner reported that uh, um, that the the Forty Niners um, were they interviewed uh, Lewis Riddick uh, from uh, from from New York. He's a he's an ESPN analyst. Again, now it's kind of going back in that way, but again, experience in the field. Um, uh, Elliot Wolf interviewed for the position. Um, Green Bay didn't give him permission, but I mean, the reports were he, 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 uh, he did anyway. Uh, their Packers director of college scouting, Brian, uh, I'm going to murder this one. Gutenich, Gutenich, G U T E K U N S T. My bad. Elliot Wolf was a lot easier. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, again, he those both uh, interviewed for it. Um, so, and, and among I got a whole whole list of guys I could just go down, go down, go down. Um, but they didn't hire any of those guys. Those seem like sensical hires. I don't think any of those necessarily be bad hires or wrong hires or anything like that. Uh, but in this situation, uh, their determination was, we're going to look at John Lynch. Again, he wasn't reported or shown as a man of interest, any sites, any blogs. And I looked. Um, he was the mystery man, but he got the hire. So is, is he this whiz that nobody knew about? Ah, everybody knows about him. I mean, we've listened to him on uh, the NFL and Fox for years. We've his commentary, his broadcast, his analytics uh, for the game of football. Anybody that you talk to, and I've talked to many people uh, regarding John Lynch. He's he's a tremendous football mind, um, and he really knows his stuff when it comes to football. So uh, to think that you know, 15 years of experience in the NFL as a player, uh, many years in the booth analyzing and talking about teams, franchises, doesn't give him a, you know, maybe a hint of uh, consideration is, 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 is frankly uh, misguided. So to think that, that people are so awkwardly, dis- uh, you know, so awkwardly, um, confused by the hire I, I just think you really don't understand what they're looking at I don't expect everybody to understand that's fine yeah and not everybody understands most things so uh, but I don't think it's a bad hire um, again I'm doing a little bit more research to find out some of his more how do you put it uh his attributes that uh, will uniquely qualify him outside the, you know, obvious experience that he's had in the NFL and around the NFL. So um, I just want to remind everybody, go over to the website, thechtonsports.com to hear all the full versions of this show. 
uh, to hear, to read any articles, all articles and stuff we have up there from the mini sports and stuff, fitness, nutrition also. Uh, we believe that's part of the sports. Follow us right here to the half at to the half. Um, and if you're on and subscribe on, on, um, you can subscribe to the channel on, <laughs> can't get it out, uh, YouTube at Matt Long Sports. And again, that's my handle for everything at Matt Long Sports. And uh, the website's handle is at the CHT on Sports. Okay. So we got all that out of the way. I want to get into the second and final topic here of the day. Um, uh, Carmelo Anthony and uh, and him being traded. Now, one thing you have to understand with Carmelo Anthony, Carmelo Anthony has um, he has a trade clause, uh, a no trade clause as a part of his contract, which most of the big stars do nowadays because. Uh, they want to be able to have a bit more say in where they go. They don't want to be aimlessly trade or put on a team where they're not going to really compete or for whatever various reasons. Maybe they want to stay in a certain city or a region or something like that. Uh, but it's been reported uh, out there, and my sources have told me that uh, team president Phil Jackson has said – well, he said nothing publicly – but the, the, the team, uh, the front office, he said that he is putting Carmelo Anthony on the trade block. Um, now, again, if you remember from last week's show, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers had their bit of a thing uh, going on with um, their star, um, LeBron James. Looking, he, he wants more depth on the team. He's looking for another score. You know, uh, the Knicks offered up a package to send him for Kevin Love straight up um, and nothing. Uh, the Cavs rejected it from uh, what the reports say. Um, then, from my understanding, the Knicks reached out to the LA Clippers in a package for uh, J.J. Redick and uh, other players in cash to be traded for Carmelo Anthony. And nothing seemed to come of that, clearly, uh, because here we are um, on the 30th, almost um, about a half a week, almost a week after. Um, and it's pretty apparent that Phil Jackson wants Carmelo Anthony out. Um, from what I understand that for some, for whatever reason, um, the Boston Celtics seem to be uh, one of the teams that he would be willing to waive his no trade clause for. Um, so that's kind of puzzling to me. Um, because if we, if we take a sit, sit back and we're, we're looking at the, you know, NBA standings on where the team is. And again, the, the Celtics have done a tremendous thing. You know, their, their general manager has been really called into question. I mean, the Celtics are sitting second in the East right now, right? Uh, but he's been called to the carpet. And and almost the task that uh, with seeing some odd changes in, in trades and acquisitions and stuff, you know, Boston fans have been up and down. They're up and down anyways, but they were kind of up and down on what they were getting out of him. They got a great five years out of the – the big three in Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and um, and Paul Pierce. So they got a lot out of that. Uh, so since moving on from that, they've hit the reset button. Um, they've been able to kind of, you know, three years ago, they, you know, hiring a new coach, they barely made it. And then they make it in. And then, you know, you wonder if they're going to really be competing um, in the playoffs. So they're sitting second right now. There are only three and a half games behind the Cavs. So, and with the way the Cavs are kind of muddling along, you're, you're going to see them run pretty close. The Raptors are four games back uh, from from Cleveland. The Hawks five. Wizards five and a half. 
And those are the top five. Those are the really ones that we're going to be looking at uh, as we get into the playoffs. Um, uh, the top, I mean, um, right now the Knicks are just sitting outside. They're, they'd be 11 seed right now in the East. So they're just outside of the top 10 and just outside of playoff contention right now. That's probably the best for them. So they're going to have, you know, a higher first round pick. If they don't get into the first round and, you know, they're going to want to be in contention for a lottery pick or something like that. We don't know. Um, but if they're getting too many lottery picks in a row, uh, it just the wonder is, are, are they trying to rebuild through the draft? Is that really what their focus is? Or they just want to unload Carmelo? Now, with Carmelo Anthony, you're not going to get defense. You're not going to get, you know, somebody's a first-team defensive player. You're going to get a guy that's a shooter. He has size, um, another ego, talent uh, that you're going to have to manage uh, on the roster. Now, with a lot of head coaches, you wonder if that's a good fit. You know, is he a bad guy? I don't think Carmelo's a bad guy. Uh, is he bad influence on people? I don't think so. But what Carmelo um, is, is what Carmelo is. He knows what he is. He accepts what he is. And it's up to, probably in his mind, it's up to these teams to accept him for what they're getting. Uh, which isn't all uncommon with somebody that has talent, that has experience, that um, has been, you know, it's not their first rodeo. Uh, he went to New York uh, for max money and to potentially win a title or be in contention with the teams and stuff that they were going to build there. It's not The triangle wasn't working for him. What Phil's trying to put in there isn't working for him. So Phil is trying to move that piece. So... It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not a bad thing on Phil's part. Doesn't mean Carmelo's a bad guy or not a good, uh, or not a good player, or people should run away from him. It just simply means that he needs to find a system that he's going to work within, um, and that system's going to have to work more around him and use him how he wants to be used. So that's a tougher fit, you know. Plus, you have to absorb a max contract. That's the other thing, too. So with the Celtics being second in the East, that's probably his train of thought. You know, they're second in the East. There's a lot of potential talent there. But what pieces would the Celtics have to give up to go to get him? Uh, the Cavs, we already know that they've decided they didn't want to give up Kevin Love. Uh, but we'll see how things develop here um, as, as we get closer to the trade deadline and the All-Star game for you know, for the NBA. So we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on that. And I'll give you some more on that. As far as the league goes, I wanted to get into what we're looking at. Right now, it's it's truly it's truly the Cavs in the East. And in the West, either Warriors or Spurs. I know Rockets fans, you want to be considered in there. And so do you, you fans out there in LA for the Clippers. Um, I know you really want to be considered in there. Again, seven and a half... Uh, back for the Rockets, 11 back for the Clippers. Again, that, I mean, obviously you're going to be seated well. Um, but right now, the two teams that really look like they could win and compete uh, against Cleveland, uh, which looks which looks to be the team that is, without a doubt, will win in the East. Um, those are, that's really it. And unfortunately, it's kind of came down to a, a three-horse race in the NBA, even before the season. Um, and this is one thing that the, the NBA doesn't like. So Carmelo Anthony to Boston, they would like that. They would really like that. Carmelo to Chicago, they would really like that. Carmelo to the Lakers, they would really like that. Because they want to get more teams involved, um, these athletes in big markets, and bigger markets. Even though Boston's kind of considered a smaller market, um, Get him in markets that, that get more of that drive and more history and stuff behind it. So the Because the fan bases are larger. Even though Boston is a smaller market, it's still a larger fan base there because they have the history. So him going there could help spark some more of that. So the NBA looks for stuff like that. Um, they need to do something to create more parity in the sport. Um, just for the simple fact that uh, without that parity you're going to lose some viewership. You're, some fan bases are tuning out. 
Lakers fans, they're fine. They they they've had dynasties. They you know they have a brand. They're not shaking the brand. They're bad for a few years. That's fine. Who cares? You know. In between the time before the time that Kobe and Shaq came in, they were pretty mediocre then too. So look at the Yankees. Are are we saying the Yankees are a bad baseball team because they haven't been the World Series in was it been six years, eight years? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. So no, we're not. We're we're gonna look at them. Hey, what are they gonna do this season? You know, they're going back to their farm system. They want to build the farm system up and bring in younger talent. You know, that's kind of some of the moves that they're going for. So the Lakers are fine. But the teams that we're kind of wondering, it's like the Kings and the Trailblazers and and the Timberwolves and the Pelicans have just been kind of those teams that, you know, uh, we, we looked at. They should be in contention. But they've gotten stars. They've lost stars. They've, they just haven't been able to get up and play that higher level of, of capability. I mean, kind of a similar thing that we see in the East. I mean, you, you got uh, the Sixers are sitting second to last in the East, um, but seem to have a lot of budding stars that may be budding or coming up. I mean, they've dropped, they've, they've had a lottery pick for the last decade, I swear. Um, and the Nets are another team that's been up there, has been kind of wobbling between between the playoffs and the bottom and they just really haven't performed either. Uh, the Heat is another team too. They they've had players, they've lost players, they've uh, key players as well. Third to last, I mean, there's really not a hope for them. But this where this is where you kind of look at where where is the league at? Uh, you know, the Pacers, the Bulls, the Hornets, the Bucks, Pistons. Those are the those are the final five teams to make the East. And there's not a single guy on those rosters. Or two guys, rather. Put it. Two guys on those rosters that you're like, any team would be fighting for them. You know? There's really not. And without that star power, you, you could see in the NBA, you have to have more star. You have to have a star or two in the NBA to really make things go. And a bench. So, my question is, what is the league going to do to create more parity in the sport? So, that's the big thing for me looking at it. Carmelo, I think he'll be a good fit for a lot of teams um, if they use him the right way, but a lot of teams aren't going to work for him. Well, that's all we got for today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at To The Half. Follow us on social media at To The Half. You can follow me at Matt Long Sports and check out the website, thechtonsports.com. That's all for me today. I'm out.